Hello, Wisdom Seekers, and welcome back to my channel. I've been on a hiatus for quite a while and have had to change up my format to be able to incorporate crystal education back into my regular routine. I hope you enjoy these new videos and, and please leave feedback in the comments below as I'll be evolving over the next few months. To reintroduce myself, I'm Shannon Marie. I'm a published author, certified gemologist, and a Reiki teacher. These videos are designed to help you learn more about gemstones and how to use them to support your daily life. In this video, I'll be talking about the history and lore of lapis lazuli and how its history contributes to and supports the spiritual benefits of this gemstone. So let's dive right in. How old is this stone? Well, of course, this stone is probably as old as the earth itself, but how long have we known about it? When was it discovered? I chose to start with lapis because of its ancient history. As one of the oldest known gemstones, lapis was said to be used for jewelry in prehistoric times and has been linked to multiple ancient cultures. The use and reverence for lapis goes back at least 6,000 years. In fact, the oldest lapis mine is in Afghanistan and has been producing high quality specimen since about 7,000 BC. How did lapis get its name? Well, first let's talk about the pronunciation. There are two ways to pronounce this stone. The first is lapis lazuli and the second is lapis lazuli. It really depends on the region you live in, but the standard dictionaries in the United States place the stress of the second word on the first syllable, lapis lazuli. So there are many languages that contributed to the name of this stone. The ancient Greeks and Romans called this stone sapphires, but was changed to its current name during the Middle Ages. In medieval Latin, the term lapis meant stone, Lazuli is not so straightforward. In Latin, it is generally interpreted as blue sky, but the Persian word lazuward also meant blue. Now, languages are not my talent, so I may not be pronouncing these perfectly, so uh, please forgive me. But azul, which is a part of the word lazuli, also means blue. So eventually we found our way to a name that generally means blue stone. What is the structure and makeup of lapis? Lapis is composed of several minerals, so it's technically considered a rock, but it is a semi-precious rock, as opposed to being its own mineral or a gem. It consists primarily of lazurite, but it could also include white calcite, sodalite, pyrite, and several other different minerals. Its inclusion of sodalite may explain why the two are often confused for each other. They do look very similar, but lapis will have pyrite inclusions, whereas sodalite does not. The most valuable pieces of lapis will have little to no white calcite are a striking blue color with noticeable inclusions of pyrite. A high quality piece of lapis looks like a, a deep blue sparkly night sky. Where is lapis found today? So lapis is mined all over the world. The largest deposits can be found in Afghanistan, Russia, and Chile, but it's also mined in Angola, Myanmar, Canada, Pakistan, California, and Colorado. And I'd actually love to see a sample from a variety of the mines all together side by side so I could see the differences between them. But what this all means is that since it is mined all over the world and in so many different places, that lapis is easily accessible and reasonably affordable depending on the quality you prefer. Which cultures use lapis and why? As I mentioned before, it's believed that lapis was used to make jewelry in prehistoric times. In 4000 BC, lapis was used as a symbol of royalty in ancient Sumeria and was linked to the Sumerian goddess Inanna. In 3100 BC, ancient Egyptians used lapis in a wide variety of decorations, jewelry, and holy objects. They ground it to a powder to use as a cosmetic, and it's said to be one of Cleopatra's favorite eye colors. 
Lapis was also used to decorate the sarcophagus and funeral mask of King Tut. Starting around 22 BC, lapis was used to carve statues and holy relics in China. In the Middle Ages, it was ground and used as a pigment in ultramarine paint. Michelangelo used it to paint the skies when he painted the Sistine Chapel. And painter Vermeer used it in the famous painting Girl with a Pearl Earring. Lapis has been used throughout the ages to decorate palaces and churches. One such example is Lion's Hall in Catherine Palace in Russia. So what are the stories or legends associated with Lapis? Well, as I mentioned before, in 4000 BC, the Sumerian goddess of love, Inanna, wore a lapis pendant and measuring rod. The color blue represented the color of the deep water and symbolized her role in creating the oceans and skies. In ancient Egypt, the stone was said to contain the soul of the gods, so it would connect the bearer directly with the gods. Lapis specifically represented the god Mat, the goddess of truth, and was used by judges and high priestesses who sought the truth and wisdom. In the Egyptian Book of the Dead, it describes how to use lapis in funeral rites, therefore aiding those transitioning to the afterlife. In one of the earliest works of literature, the Epic of Gilgamesh, lapis was mentioned several times. In this story, lapis is used many times to represent the gods, either as gifts from the gods or to indicate that something is the property of or is a representative of the gods. Another legend describes how King Solomon was aided by an angel of the Lord who gave him a lapis ring. This ring enabled him to control an army of demons that he used to build a temple. And then also from a healing perspective, some cultures used lapis ground up as a powder and used in a poultice to draw out spiritual impurities. It would help a person release those urges and qualities that were preventing spiritual progress. How can these legends about lapis contribute to its benefits? Because of its shade of blue and the flecks of sparkly pyrite, it's often been associated with the sky and to the gods who ruled from above. Throughout history, from all over the world and unrelated communities, lapis has represented the gods and the spiritual world. It aids in connecting to the gods, accessing the spirit world, and transitioning to the spirit world after death. This connects directly with the benefits associated with lapis. Sitting with lapis can help you connect with all aspects of your spiritual nature. First, lapis can help to awaken intuition. This helps you open and receive wisdom from whichever entity you consider greater than yourself or from the collective unconscious. Lapis also helps you connect to your own deep inner wisdom the wisdom stored within you from past experience, past lives, and past guidance. It strengthens your sense of a gut feeling and your ability to act on them. Lapis acts, in essence, as a gateway to the gods or as a gateway to external and internal wisdom. Second, as Lapis represented the god of truth, it also acts to unveil the truth you may be denying and to help you uncover authenticity in your life. And I believe one of our ultimate spiritual goals is to discover and honor our authentic presence in this world. Lapis is a powerful tool for revealing the truth in a way that is undeniable and helps us own this truth. It's the color of the throat chakra, which regulates our sense of truth, authenticity, communication, and wisdom. If you are in a stage of finding yourself, sharing your true self, or just acknowledging the truth within, lapis is a great stone to support this opening and ownership in your life. And then finally, lapis is a stone that helps with spiritual protection. It protects your aura and energy. It will protect your mind, spirit, and body during meditations, rituals, and spiritual practices. 
If you have an active spiritual path and practice, especially if you are just starting, wearing or holding lapis can help keep you centered and protected during these practices. If you feel oppressed, surrounded by negative energy, or the target of someone else's negative energy, lapis acts as a shield to protect your energy. In essence, this is the perfect stone for spiritual awakening because it allows you to open up, receive, express yourself, and protects you while you do so. So in your everyday life, if you are immersing into your spiritual life, performing spiritual study and practices, and trying to awaken your intuition, wear this stone. You can feel safe in releasing any hesitation about your practice. So in summary, throughout history, Lapis was considered a gemstone that would connect you to the spirit world. And it stands today as a gemstone that can help support, expand, and strengthen your own spiritual practice. I hope you've enjoyed this new format of video and find this information useful. If you have felt called to this stone, I hope this video helps you realize why you may have a connection with it. If you would like to learn all about crystals and gemstones and how they can support your daily life, please do subscribe to this channel so you won't miss a single gemstone video. Thank you.